Hey guys, I finally got my hands on Doom Eternal and damn, this game is really, really good. Doom 2016 was an amazing game and I even consider it as my GOTY. So you can imagine how hyped I was about Doom Eternal and after playing it for 3 hours I can say that the wait was definitely worth it. Though I have a few concerns about some of the design choices on this game, so now I'm going to talk about the things I didn't expect to see in the sequel of Doom 2016. So first of all, after completing two missions in Doom Eternal, I find the level design in this game a little weird. Unlike in Doom 2016, it feels less focused on world building, but more on creating this old school arcade feel, where you have closed arenas and linear corridors with platforming sections in between. From what it looks like, developers fully embrace that they are making an arcade shooter with power-ups, and less bothered with trying to logically explain what's going on in this game. Even weapons and keycards in Doom Eternal look like glowing pickups, and honestly, I'm slightly disappointed by this aesthetic change. It's not an ultimately bad thing, I just expected something closer to the more realistic feel of Doom 2016, rather than the simplicity of original Doom games. Another thing that is slightly bothering me is how Doom Eternal introduces itself, or to be more correct, how it just throws you right to the action without explaining anything. I find it weird that the game doesn't pick up where Doom 2016 left off, and instead just starts with this cutscene where the moon is destroyed and Earth is invaded by demons. Then we see Doom Guy on some sort of space station floating on the Earth orbit, and then you are teleporting to the planet to kill Hell Priests, but you can't reach them without some ancient device that you need to find in the ruins of Forsaken City of Sentinels, and then you need to restore the power. Okay, okay, slow down a little. How about giving some explanations first? Like why things got so bad on us, where did the space fortress come from, and what happened with Doom Guy after that cliffhanger at the end of Doom 2016. I know it's weird to complain about the story in the old school FPS game, but in Doom Eternal there is a surprising amount of cutscenes. It feels like they've tried to create a more complex plot, but then developers suddenly changed their mind and decided to just drop the player right into things. I think that the storytelling in Doom 2016 was done in a much more natural way. Here it just feels like an amusement park where you shoot demons, but it doesn't feel like a story-driven game anymore, despite those overly dramatic cutscenes. It really looks like developers weren't sure if they wanted to go back to the roots or to turn Doom Eternal into an epic space opera, so they stuck somewhere in between. Well, on the other hand, the core gameplay of Doom Eternal is awesome. It's still a fun and intense action game. The gunplay is great, slaying the demons is extremely satisfying, environments look insanely detailed, and levels are well designed and full of fun little secrets. In Doom Eternal, they focused on improving the movement mechanics. Like on the second level, you unlock dash ability, which allows you to quickly move around the arenas and easily avoid attacks. The weapon upgrades and rune systems uh, were upgraded as well, allowing you to be more creative in killing demons. Though I feel like there's a lot less armor than before. I'm playing on the ultra violence difficulty and it's not allowing me to just mindlessly jump around and slay demons. Doom Eternal is forcing the player to be more accurate and also requires to use chainsaw oftenly in order to replenish the armor. Glory kills have become extremely important if you want to survive in those battles, and I can see that some people might not like that. I can't say that I hate them myself, but I just don't understand why developers felt like they needed to restrict the players like this. Same goes to that purple liquid that slows you down and doesn't allow you to jump and dash. Who the hell thought that slowing down the player movement in a fast-paced game would be a good idea? <sighs> Along with single player campaign, there is also a new online mode called Battle Mode, but honestly, I'm not sure why they bothered with it at all. I've tried to play a few matches in this mode, and for me, it felt too overcomplicated and boring. 
If the dev team absolutely needed to add some sort of multiplayer, they could have just added a classic deathmatch or capture the flag, and I would have been grateful for that, because I love arena FPS games with passion, and I was one of the few people who actually enjoyed playing the multiplayer in Doom 2016. So I find their explanation regarding the lack of deathmatch in Doom Eternal rather infuriating. I mean, they didn't bother with explaining why weapons in the campaign now look like floating holograms, but they were worried that the deathmatch would feel disconnected from the base game. I called bullshit on that, and also there were demons in Doom 2016 multiplayer, and it's strange that the developers themselves forget about that. Or maybe Pete Hines lied again, who knows. Anyway, it's a shame that we got something that nobody asked for instead of classic online modes, because if they were going to put an actual effort into making Deathmatch this time, it could have ended up a lot better than in Doom 2016. Ok, now a few words about the quality of the PC version. If you are going to buy the game on Steam, you need to know that it requires you to log in with your Bethesda account in order to play it. I know some people might not want to do that, but it didn't bother me personally, and it's even somehow logged into my account automatically, despite the fact that I never played this game before. Anyway, I've tried to bypass the Bethesda account requirement with this command line argument that you can see right now on the screen, but it didn't work for me. If you really don't want to create a Bethesda account and still want to try this possible solution, I will put this line into the description of this video for easy copy and paste. Doom Eternal has a lot of settings and customization options, including UI, controls, graphics, audio and even accessibility. To my pleasure, there was an option to completely disable HUD, and as you could have seen in this video, it even remains more or less playable that way. As for performance, I've easily managed to reach a rock-solid 60fps at 4K resolution with ultra-quality preset on GTX 1080 Ti, so I expect that getting a stable frame rate on a less powerful hardware shouldn't be a big problem. But in fast-paced games, frame rate matters more than the graphics, so in order to reach 144fps, I switched to 4040p resolution and lowered down some of the graphics settings. And lastly, just a reminder that you need to install this game on SSD, because it reduces the load times to literally a few seconds, which is an amazing result. In conclusion, right now I have mixed feelings about Doom Eternal. It's a great game, but it's just not what I expected to see from the Doom 2016 sequel. It's undeniably improved in terms of gameplay, but I'm not a fan of some of the design choices that developers have made in this game. I'm going to continue playing Doom Eternal and of course planning to eventually make a review on it, I'm just slightly disappointed by what I've seen so far and wanted to warn you guys about those changes. And lastly, a small tip, if you want to disable intro videos on the startup, just add this command line argument in the game's launch options. I can confirm that at least this solution actually works, so you can find this line in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more.